All right then, hello there, and welcome to another episode of... <coughs> News from the Gelding. Okay, so first of all, um, if you're new to this channel, uh, this is the kind of thing I occasionally do where I'm talking about news that pertains to my writing or my painting or whatever. Behind the scenes stuff. So, um, yeah, if you're here for the book reviews, um, there'll be one next Friday. So I've I'm almost finished reading the second book of the Dark Tower series, uh, The Drawing of the Free by Stephen King. So I'll be re reviewing that. Otherwise, if if everyone else fancies it, let's get into a bit of news. Some really big news. Not really. So for the past week, well, the past three weeks, I would say, I've been working quite a lot on the Dark Matter book that I'm going to be releasing, hopefully at the beginning of December. So um, if you haven't already heard, this is just a, a short story compilation that I'm doing. Uh, six different stories of the dark science fiction um, genre, if that is a genre. I think it is. So, yeah, stories verging on horror, but not really. Um, mostly stories with bad endings, I suppose. Um, so there we are. Uh, oh, I shouldn't have had that coffee. Um, sorry, apologies. Um, no, I'm still drinking the coffee now. So I have to have these very small coffees at this time of the day because I'll be doing my driving job a bit later and I'll be stuck in the car for three hours. So you have to be careful what um, fluids you take into your body. Quite typically, uh, taxi drivers do suffer from uh, dehydration for that reason. Um, also, their bodies are being dried out by the air conditioning in the car. What are you talking about, John? Come on, let's get on with it. Get on with it. So, yes, I've been working on those five stories, uh, the ones I've already written, honing them, editing them to within an inch of their lives. I think those are really strong now. I think personally, I think they're good. I'm currently working on the last story. This will be the sixth one. And it's, it could become a bit of a monster in terms of word count. I'm currently at around 4,000 words. I think I'm two thirds of the way through it. So it might be around 6,000 words, which is OK. But uh, I tend to um, overwrite sometimes, so it may get longer. But then I'll just have to hack away at it and take out um, the dross. But the one I'm writing at the moment is interesting to me because it's based on a dream that I had a year ago. In fact, two of the stories in this compilation are based on dreams. But I may talk about that um, more on another episode, perhaps. So, um, yeah, here's the cover of that book. I may have already put it up. I don't know. Um, this is an early-ish iteration of the covers, the cover designs that I've been coming up with for Dark Matter. I've done a couple of a couple more recent ones. Um, but what I was thinking of um, is that now that YouTube have blessed me with the community tab, I will be able to run a poll, I think. So what I might do is ask you, dear viewers, um, to cast your discernible eye over these covers and pick the one you prefer. I've got my own personal favourite, uh, but I won't influence you in what that might be. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what you think. You might not like any of them, but unfortunately, I'm I'm past caring. <laughs> uh, I, I don't want to do any more work on it, really. I've, I've got these few designs and hopefully one of those will take your fancy. It's got a bloody skull on it. Anyway, I mean, what can you what more do you want? OK, so there we are. Poll. Yes, that's going to be happening. Maybe tomorrow. OK, so aside from writing, um, I've been working on some more painting commissions. So I've got three painting commissions um, at the moment. Um, the f I'm, I've pretty much finished one of them. It's just out of shot there on, on my easel. I thought it was finished, but it, it, it isn't. So um, this is the third commission I've done for Tommy over in America. Um, I'll show a little, this is a close up of just the face portion of this painting. I don't want to show the whole thing because it's, um, I don't have permission. It's, you know, it's a private commission. So this is, I, the, the, the paintings I do for him are kind of based, they're kind of collages of, of photographs put together in a different way. Um, 
that's one way of describing it, I suppose. And the reference material that Tommy gave me, I've reproduced as, as best I can. So the face here is what he gave me. Unfortunately, he's changed his mind now as to uh, the face he wants there. So this is going to be quite tricky for me to change, um, which is causing me a bit of stress at the moment. But these things are sent to try us and we can improve our skills based on these little obstacles that we have to overcome. And I hope I can because it risks ruining the whole painting um, if I get that one piece wrong. But there we are, that's something I'm hoping he'll change his mind and keep keep the original uh, uh, face. But if not, <clears throat> I've got some work ahead of me. Okay, the second uh, commission. I don't have any images to show you for this one. So this is for my dear sibling, Maria. Um, it's a commission for a uh, a present, a gift for someone. So I, I don't want to reveal what that is at the moment, just in case it, they see it, perhaps. I mean, who doesn't watch these videos? So, you know, the chances of them finding out are quite high. Um, so, yeah, and it'll be uh, painting something I've never painted before. Um, I'm quite excited by the prospect. Um, no, it's not um, titties or anything like that because I've painted a fair few of those. No, this is something else, a piece of machinery. That's all I'll say. Um, the third and final commission is something that I'm doing for friend of the channel, Dick Splash, also known as Chris. Um, so this isn't a commission as such. If he doesn't like it, he doesn't have to buy it or anything like that. It's just, um, so this is Glitch Girl. Uh, the first glitch girl painting I did um, and unfortunately for Chris my father bought it before Chris could buy it so um, I said to Chris tell you what I'll do glitch girl too so I've got um, I've worked up an idea for the second glitch girl um, so that's ready to go ready to start working on that but uh, this the other commissions getting in the way at the moment but Chris if you're watching I'll be doing it soon okay Okay, so right, that's that's all the work side of things out the way. Let's talk about life. A little bit of life. I hope everyone's all right at the moment. Um, I think we're going through bleak times, aren't we? In this this day and age that we're going through, I think in in times to come they'll be calling this the second dark age. Um, you know, we had the Brexit, all that crap. Then we had the covid and now we've got the things going on between you know russia and ukraine and possible infringements and escalations and world war crap um i'm quite a worrier personally and uh i've been worrying a great deal about this it to the point where i was just i was just thinking just get on with it let's just blow the world up and let's uh we can all rest we can all stop worrying that is not a healthy way to think, um, everyone. Um, so I'm, <laughs> I'm trying not to be quite so gloomy. I think mean, the best thing to do is try not to listen to the news, read a good book, um, uh, just lose yourself. That's what I'm trying to do. But that was made very hard for me last week because my fucking vape died. So every 10th breath of air that I breathe, I like to add at least two or three um, inhalations of vape <laughs> and so um, I had this may mean nothing to you but this this is what I had it was a smock I call I pronounce it smock I think it's smock I've heard it pronounced smoke but there's no e on the end so it's smock smock Rigel that's the, the last mod that I had lasted about two years and then last week it started playing tricks on me and uh, I wasn't able to get the puffs I wanted so I ordered another one and luckily it came on the day where I was pr prepared to destroy things because I wasn't getting enough nicotine. So yeah, that was great. That vape was bloody lovely. Um, so that one was a geek vape. Um, really nicely designed, felt nice in the hand, had a nice like leather holder on the to rest your fingers on whilst you're vaping. That bastard fucking died, didn't it? After a week, it wouldn't recognize the atomizer on the top, this bit. So I went into full meltdown. Um, the only thing I could do was I resurrected my old smock alien. Now that vape 
has been through hell and back and I put it in my cupboard because it died. I got so desperate that um, I just took a roll of sellotape and sellotaped the shit out of it and by some small miracle it started working. That kept me going for about three days and then that died. So then I just walked into town, went into a vape shop and paid an uh, eye-watering price for a off-the-counter, over-the-counter vape. And that's the one I've got here. It's a, it's an unfortunately named vape actually. It's a Voopoo. Um, <laughs> I don't know what else. It's the second version of some bollocks. But it's a very nice vape and no problems so far. It's even got a nice, like the other one, it's got a nice um, fabric grip on it. Lovely. Hmm. Okay, so on top of all that, what else have I, have I been doing? Apart from stressing my tits off with lack of vape, I bought the first ever piece of artwork from another artist. Now, it's only a print that I bought because the original, I would have had to have taken a mortgage out to um, afford it. Um, so yeah, this is a print, but it's um, an artist proof um, print so it's from from the artist studio um, and it's by Rodney Matthews um, so a fantasy artist from the the 70s and 80s who was most prolific um, so I'm not going to show you the the paint um, the the print because I've had it recently returned from the framers I've had it framed in this lovely Italian um, dark stained wood surround bloody lovely but i won't show you yet because i'm going to do a video just on that and i'm going to talk about why the image is important to me and how it changed my life yeah so that's something to look forward to if there if there's nothing else to look forward to in your life mm, it's going to be lovely okay the last thing i'll talk about is had a lovely um, weekend, not this one gone, the one before. We're celebrating Vanessa's mother's birthday. Um, I almost said her age then. I don't know if she'd want me to say that because she watches these videos. It rhymes with plenty. No, it doesn't. It's not 20, but uh, it doesn't matter. Um, anyway, we had a lovely time. Um, Adam, uh, Vanessa's brother, um, organised um, a, a two-day retreat in the spa retreat in the north of Devon. And we had our own little apartment for the six of us. And it com came complete with a hot tub. Bloody lovely. Um, so the first evening we were there, we were sat in that hot tub. We managed to get all six of us in at one point. It was a bit of a squeeze, but it was, but it was lovely. Um, uh, we were in there for about three hours, drinking uh, lovely beverages and just having a jolly good time. Um, now, the thing I loved about the um, hot tub, aside from the splendid warmth in an otherwise chilly evening and the gentle caress of various bubbles on your nether regions, was the conversation. So the shape of the hot tub necessitates conversation. You're, you're sat right opposite someone else. Um, and I just really liked that. And it reminded me of um, last year I was doing a bit of research. It might have been for a story I was writing or, or a painting, perhaps. And I was looking at uh, 70s aesthetics um, in terms of houses. And in America, I think this is specific to America. It might have made it over to these shores. I'm not sure. But houses in the 70s were sometimes built with conversation pits. And so these were like sunk into the, the floor of a living room as a, a circular recess around which you would all sit and drink and maybe partake of a cigarette or two and have a jolly good conversation. Again, you're sat, you're sat in that circular formation. You're looking opposite other people and having a lovely time. Such a brilliant idea. I would love to have a conversation pit one day. Even better if you could have a, a fire in the middle of it, perhaps with some delicious flickering flames in the middle. <laughs> well, one can dream. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Um, apologies for this tatty old rag that I'm uh, wearing, but it's bloody cold in here. And due to the energy crisis and all that bollocks, I've decided not to heat my studio until I really have to. Um, but I will have to bite the bullet soon, because I remember last winter I tried to... Um, 
tried to last it out and it just wasn't getting anything done because it was too bloody cold. Anyway, thanks for watching and I will be back next week with a book review and there'll be another video talking about that um, print that I bought recently. I've got some other things um, coming as well at, uh, at some point, but I won't talk about them yet because it may never even bloody happen. You know what I'm like. Okay, right, let's go. Um, thanks for watching and cheerio. Say goodbye, suppressive. Uh, yes, uh, I hope you all have a wonderful day. Now, fuck off. Mm, suppressive, you naughty boy. Mm. <laughs>